Welcome back to Down the Road. We're going to touch upon a lot of things today. Uh, corporate America uh, got together by, well, they got together from a distance, but they got together by Zoom and they sat down and they talked about what they want to do when it comes to some of the voting rights bills. And we're going to go over that today. Uh, Zach Ist is going to join us, state representative uh, from Grand Forks. We're going to find out how it's going there. Also get a chance to talk about his please, piece of legislation that deals with insurance for fallen police officers. Obviously that happened with Officer Holty in Grand Forks. Also Patrick Hart's going to join us today. Patrick wants to be chairman of the Democratic Party. He's one of two that's running and we'll find out why and, and what he's going to do with the job if he gets it today. But uh, Dr. Avish and uh, Nagpal joins us right now. Uh, Dr. Nagpal is a uh, uh, infectious div disease specialist. I'm sorry, having a tough time today. Sanford infectious disease specialist, and he knows a lot about COVID and, and the fight that we're in. Dr. Nagpal, welcome to Down the Road. Good to have you with us. We'll get a chance to get that straightened out to where we can hear you in just a second. But uh, one of the reasons that we wanted to talk to De uh, Dr. Nag Paul was because of the fact that there's a lot of rumors going on out there. There's a lot of people who are saying uh, that, you know what, uh, if, you, if you take the vaccine, this is going to happen to you. If you do this, uh, you know, that's going to happen to you. And, and so we wanted to get a chance to dispel a lot of rumors or maybe find out which ones are true. And that's why I asked Dr. Nagpal to, to join us. Doctor, can you hear me now? Yes, absolutely. There we go. We got you now. Um, a lot of rumors floating around. A lot of people not getting vaccinated because of those rumors. How frustrating is it to you uh, to hear that the information that people are getting is through, uh, is, is through FaceTime and other places that have no scientific basis? Yeah, so, uh, you know, good point. It's uh, it's really quite challenging. Uh, on the one hand, we are fighting the pandemic. And on the other hand, we are fighting what we call as infodemic, which is a lot of information, not all of which may be true. Uh, and some of that is frankly false. So, um, and, and it, our society has changed a little bit. You know, uh, many people get their news feeds from um, these, um, you know, social networks like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, whatnot, um, and uh, and you know they don't um, they don't have um, any ways of making sure that in the information that's out there is uh, accurate and not false, and you know they don't cross check their sources. So so it's it's quite a challenge for us. Well, let's talk about some of those rumors. Uh, let's talk about some of the reasons that people are giving for not taking the vaccine. Um, I'll go over a couple of them that um, I've had a chance to read and to, to talk about today on my radio show. One of the first ones uh, was that it's too soon. It all happened too quick, that the proper testing wasn't done before the CDC said, yes, you can go ahead with this vaccine. Uh, let's get your take on that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, vaccines are the most regulated products across any industry, not healthcare industry. And they have been through um, very, very uh, well done clinical trials between the three trials of, for the vac three vaccines that are authorized right now. We have had, you know, about 100,000 people enrolled on those trials. That's significantly more than, uh, say, uh, for any other drug, like a cancer drug, uh, for an example. So the data on um, vaccine efficacy and safety is robust. Um, um, you know, we have reviewed it. It's a very transparent process. FDA has reviewed it. Um, you know, the meetings um, and the, how the members voted on authorizing the um, vaccine is very transparent. There is, you know, nothing that's hidden or uh, there's nothing that's, you know, was not disclosed. Uh, everything is very transparent and um, and reported in our medical literature and has been presented again and again. So uh, to say that vaccines have been rushed is entirely not true. Um, how we have been able to compress the production within one year um, from two years, three years, or four years is because we have done a lot of work simultaneously, which means that um, data analysis has been in real time. Um, Corning has produced a lot of um, uh, vials um, to make sure that the, we don't run short of that. 
um, we have worked on our storage capacities, cold chain distribution, um, getting ourselves prepared uh, to undertake this endeavor. We have to uh, inoculate a lot of people in a very short time. So a lot of people have worked very, very hard on this. And, uh, and I'm, um, you know, my, my only goal right now is to make sure that all that hard work is not wasted. So no corners have been cut in manufacturing the vaccine or uh, making it go through the rigorous scientific process. So uh, let me give you another one, Dr. Nagpal. The, the, there's a lot of people out there that are also saying that because the variants are here and the variants are different than what's going on with the coronavirus, uh, that you know, when you look at uh, COVID-19, why become vaccinated when you're just going to not be able to fight off the variants as well? Your take on that? That's one of the most important reasons to get vaccinated say half the people uh, refuse the vaccine, then what will happen is the vaccine, uh, sorry, the virus has a free path to the community in other 50% people who don't take up the vaccine. And then we end up with a problem where, you know, um, virus has a chance to mutate further and become resistant to the vaccine. We don't want that. Um, and the ones that we have right now, the variants of clinical interest that we call them, they all seem to be, uh, you know, responding to the vaccine in terms that uh, the vaccine protects against them too. So before we actually get a variant that is not protected by the vaccine, uh, I think uh, that's the challenge for us uh, to inoculate as many people as we can in uh, as quickly as we can. So fertility, uh, that, that's another issue that comes up consistently is the fact that uh, it's, it's going to make you infertile. You're not going to be able to have babies. Your take on that? Um, absolutely false. It's not even scientifically possible to inoculate somebody and make them infertile. Um, so uh, there is no truth to that statement. And, you know, COVID-19 vaccine is not the fund, uh, not the first one uh, that has been uh, accused of causing infertility ever since we have had vaccinations. Um, and this is a general um, um, uh, statement, misinformation statement that's put out there um, um, by some groups which say that vaccines cause infertility. If you look at the history of population growth on the planet, the population growth has uh, increased exponentially with the advent of vaccine. It has not gone down exponentially. So that's all the evidence you need to uh, counter the fact, uh, sorry, counter the false information that um, the vaccine may cause infertility. There is absolutely no truth to that statement. So the, the area that's, that's viewing you right now is, is broad. It's, it's the state of North Dakota and beyond those boundaries. A lot of those individuals watch Beck News. And so, you know, when you look at the geography of who is saying yes to the vaccine and who is saying no to the vaccine, you certainly would have to point out that the Western North Dakota is the area that is primarily saying no to the vaccine, certainly in higher numbers, in greater numbers. Now, Sanford has a footprint there. Uh, you do. What, what can you do? What, what do we need to do? Other than shows like this, which is to put out... Uh, put the truth out there and not allow the lies to rule the day. I mean, what can we do in very conservative areas uh, to convince people that, look, you know, th this this vaccine is just exactly, Dr. what you just described it, and that the other things are falsehoods, that, that what they're going to do is not allow this country to get back on their feet. So, you know, look at your surroundings and talk to your healthcare providers is, um, uh, are the two things that we can definitely rely on. You know, many people who are still vaccine hesitant say that they want to talk to their doctor first. Well, don't delay that anymore. Uh, I understand that you trust your doctor and that's how a doctor-patient relationship should work. So make that phone call, uh, ask them what your concern is. Um, and your doctor should be able to provide you that information. If they don't have that information, they can always reach out to other experts and discuss with them and then get back to you. So, so don't wait on, if, you're, if you're waiting for your appointment to talk to your doctor about that, then, yeah, you know, then make that phone call right now. Um, uh, all of us are uh, you know, very willing to answer the questions. We have robust data on vaccine, and we can answer most of the questions that you may have. Um, the other thing uh, you need to remind yourself is um, don't 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 just think that your risk is low. Um, you know, uh, we we all should remember what happened in last spring and what happened in last fall. 
um, the, uh, this spreads through uh, the community like a wildfire and shuts everything down. And we will be in this, um, you know, vicious circle again and again, where we uh, keep going into lockdowns. We e um, the infection ease up a little bit. We open up again. Then infections start again. Then we go into lockdown again. So the only way out of this uh, vicious cycle is if we have enough people vaccinated. Um, and of course, you know, um, the next frontier that I'm looking at is um, uh, getting the vaccine um, uh, data on kids uh, to hopefully get that approved for kids so we can um, immunize the kids too and they can um, stop circulating the virus. So, uh, so uh, you know, remember what happened in 2020? Um, and no matter what we feel right now, where we are, um, I think we can all agree on one thing, that is we don't want a repeat of 2020. So in looking through my notes and, and things that I definitely wanted to uh, to visit with you about in the minute I have left, if, if you could just tell people one thing in, in terms of all the falsehoods that, that are out there, if you could just tell people one thing uh, that encourages them to go get this vaccine because it is available to them. Anyone 16 and above in North Dakota can become vaccinated. It's there. It's available. What would you tell them, doctor? I'll tell them two things. One, the vaccine is safe. And two, vaccine works. And those are the only two things that matter. Anything else that you might hear, check with your doctor. It probably is false information, but check with the person uh, who you trust the most, uh, whether it's your family, whether it's your healthcare provider, whether it's your doctor, nurse, uh, pharmacy, uh, pharmacist who may you may be related to or you may, may be your friend, uh, cross-check your sources of information. If you are hearing something that's out of the blue, it's probably false information. Uh, we have pretty robust data, it's very transparent, um, and if there's a problem going forward, you'll hear about it. And, and I, you know, um, I won't hold that information back from you. Uh, if I uh, see a safety signal in a vaccine, um, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, your doctor will tell you. Um, I think we care about our patients. We would not give you or suggest you any medicine or any vaccine that we would not uh, suggest for our family members. Uh, doctor, uh, thank you. Thanks for giving time. Thanks for helping to get word out. Hopefully we've convinced more people to get vaccinated after this. So thanks for coming on. Thank you as well. Uh, when we come back, Zach Ist is going to join us. He's a state representative. A lot of issues going on down in Bismarck. Let's touch base with uh, Representative Vista when we come back right here down the road. Howdy, folks. It's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you'll do for a hot meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar. Sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Hi, it's me, Anthony Sullivan. And yes, you've actually caught me at home relaxing because life's been pretty worry-free since I got coverage with American Residential Warranty. You won't believe what ARW covers. Heating and air conditioning, washers and dryers, kitchen appliances, plumbing, water heaters, electrical systems, flat screens and laptops, even pools and spas, and so much more. Call American Residential Warranty. They'll get you covered. 1-800-219-1467. Hi, Hunter Ellis here for Night Hero Binoculars by Atomic Beam. These binoculars let you see anything, even in pitch black darkness. Gotcha. The secrets are powerful wide angle atomic beam laser that reveals objects up to 150 yards away hidden by darkness. During the day, Night Hero gives you 10 times magnification. And when the sun goes down, press the Night Bright button to see clearly in the dark. Light up garbage eating critters or spot thieves before they even get close. Call or click now and get Night Hero binoculars for just $39.99. Order right now and you can double it. Plus, get our best selling atomic beam flashlight, just pay a separate fee. We'll even ship them to you free. This TV special offer is not available on Amazon. You can get it all, but you have to order now. Call 1-800-619-1091. That's 1-800-619-1091. Or visit ByNightHero.com. That's ByNightHero.com. Order now.
Attention, have you or a loved one suffered from maculopathy, a serious retinal injury, after taking the prescription drug Elmiron for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome? In 2018, a researcher at the Emory School of Medicine linked Elmiron, a prescription drug that treats interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome, to maculopathy, which is sight-threatening and can cause an abrupt change of vision. Call Elmiron Justice for a free legal consultation. Please call 800-395-5680. Non-attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. Welcome back to Down the Road. We get a chance now to head out to Bismarck. Uh, Zach Ist is a state representative. He's from District 43 in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and he's assistant state's attorney uh, in Grand Forks County. So that's a lot of hats to wear. Let's bring him in. Representative Ista, good to have you coming down the road with us. Thanks, Joel. It's good to be back uh, in the big rig. Hope you kept the snow tires on. Uh, you know, I switched over on my Ranger, my Polaris Ranger. So, and I live on the side of a hill. So I'm sitting there going, ah, you switched the tires over too quick. And I got the blade off it, but that doesn't take long. So if you if you go sign and die and you want to do some shoveling, I know where you can come after I'll this. I'll be there. <laughs> Believe me, it's moisture. And everybody's looking for moisture. So, um, you know, you are getting close to done, though. You are getting close to sign and die. How does it feel? It, it feels um, like there's a lot of a pent up uh, excitement and pent up desire to sort of get to the the finish line here you know this is uh, everybody uses the analogy of a three period hockey game and we're in that third period now and uh, it's it's a race to the finish our appropriators are uh, you know doing the finishing touches on their budgets the conference committees are doing our work uh, and I think this session we have the added wrinkle of a, a big influx of some federal uh, relief funds coming our way here towards the end so uh, lots of moving pieces, lots of uh, decisions left to be made, but like you said, the end is in sight, and I, I think all of us are excited to, to see how we can uh, move this state forward for the good uh, folks of North Dakota. It's always hard because at this point during the session, you get to a point where big money decisions are made, and uh, you're, you're not always in the room. Uh, I've been there, done that. You're not always one of the ones that's deciding, and then they come out of the room, uh, and the next thing you know, they want to just rush it through. I mean, how, how tight of an eye do you have to keep on all of that? Oh, you've got to be uh, extremely on top of it. Uh, like I said, the, the, the moving pieces go fast and furious here at the end. So, you know, my caucus, the Dem NBL caucus, is, is very fortunate to have representatives Tracy Bow, Elisa Mitzkog, and Corey Mock in the room where it happens here on the appropriation side in the House. We've got Senators Heckman and Mathern uh, across the hallway keeping a close eye on these things. Leader Boucher, uh, as well. They, you know, they keep us well informed about what's going on, where all these moving pieces are. And you just got to be uh, keeping your ear to the, uh, to the ground and hearing what's going on in those hallway conversations and be ready to uh, uh, ask the tough questions when necessary. Yeah. Well, uh, that's a great point and a great way of looking at it. When you, when you look at what your personal work was, uh, I am just amazed uh, at one of the things that you championed and how important it was because the Holty family has some roots uh, back where I'm from. I think I've talked to you about this a little bit before, but Officer Holty dying in the line of duty uh, and, and your drive to make sure that his family uh, has the type of health insurance they need. Walk people through what this piece of legislation did and where it's at. Yeah, I'd love to, Joel. This was uh, really something I put a lot of uh, effort into this session. Uh, we, when we last spoke, Joel, we had uh, we were halfway through the process of getting it so that the spouse and uh, dependent children of a firefighter or police officer or other emergency services worker who's killed in the line of duty, killed in service to their community, in service to our state, that those surviving family members don't get booted off their uh, insurance plans. Uh, and and the sticky problem on it was, well, who's going to uh, pay for that? Uh, our friends up at the Grand Forks had ran an editorial supporting the bill, the bill, and they said, well, 
North Dakota lawmakers are a clever bunch and they're going to figure out how to finance this. And maybe your viewers think that's some misplaced uh, optimism about our skill, but this time it, it, it happened and we figured it out. So the bill has now passed the House. It has passed the Senate. It is waiting on the governor's desk for his signature. And what it does, Joel, is it lets the family members of these fallen heroes stay uh, covered by health insurance. And specifically, it's going to enroll them in the North Dakota State Employees Plan. Uh, and any of your uh, viewers who are lucky enough to have that plan know it's a pretty good one. It's a it's a no premium plan. It's really good coverage. You know, there's some minor opposition when it came to the Senate floor suggesting, well, it, it wouldn't be cheaper to just give them a coupon to go buy health care on the federal exchange. And I'm glad the Senate rejected that. We don't want the uh, the families of our fallen heroes shopping in the bargain bin for insurance. We want to make sure we take care of them. We honor the sacrifices that the, their um, family members made. And I think that's going to uh, be a great bill. And hopefully it's one that's never, ever used again in the state of North Dakota. Yeah. That's an absolutely great point. Good job. I mean, never used again. Uh, that, that would be the goal. Um, how did you fund it? How did you find the money to do that? I, it's such a small piece of the it, budget. I mean, it, that, it, yeah, it, it is a tiny piece uh, of the budget, Joel. And the nice thing about using the state employees plan is you can really spread that cost out over the tens of thousands of beneficiaries who are already members of that plan. So it works out to something like 55 cents per contract per month uh, uh, on the plan. So it's a really modest amount. Uh, that's assuming, it, we styled the bill so it goes back the previous 10 years. So anybody who was lost in the line of duty in the last 10 years would qualify. And, and even at that level, it's like I said, just a, a, a few pennies a month on each uh, insurance plan in the state. So. Uh, everybody who took a look at it agreed that we could afford this, and that's that's where it ended up. So I'm really proud that we're going to put those North Dakota values into the Century Code and, and take care of our families like that. Good, 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 good. And I I, I don't know if Officer Mosier was um, was on the North Dakota or Minnesota side. Does that matter? Um, and, and when I say that, I mean living. I know that he was a Fargo police officer, and he also fell in the line of duty. But does he qualify for this? Yeah, it, it's, it's written so that the place of employment is, is what matters. So any of our publicly employed firefighters, police officers, uh, corrections officers, EMS folks, as long as they were employed by a, a governmental entity, the state, the city, the county, township, what have you, then they'll be eligible for uh, this benefit. How about, how about the rural uh, volunteer firefighters? Are they, are they eligible? No, the, the the volunteers are not eligible. We had to make sure we weren't stepping on any um, federal insurance regulations or or uh, the purpose wasn't to give a, a new almost windfall benefit. If, if they're not already covered by a public uh, insurance plan, uh, then their status quo is, will stay the same. We won't add them to the plan. So this is for the, the folks who, you know, as you know, Joel, many times our police, our fire, they have you know, negotiated a nice benefits package that includes good health insurance. So that's the population we're really aiming this legislation at to make sure that in the midst of the grieving, in the midst of the tragedy, they're not all of a sudden going through the tedious process of trying to find new insurance. We're going to take care of them by just rolling them into the North Dakota State Employee Plan. That, that makes sense. Uh, I had to ask, so a lot of folks that are that are viewing us right now, there, many of them know or are rural firefighters. Um, I want to talk to you about, as you go, Sine Die, you're awful close to it. When you look back at this legislative session and you look at what has been the most disappointing, that leaves you scratching your head, uh, what's it been? What, what do you wish would have went to the governor's desk that didn't? Uh, well, you know, there's, there's a lot of things out there that uh, the Dem NPL Cox has put forward that I think would help our working families. Uh, you've had Representatives Carla Rose Hansen, Senator Oban on to talk about paid family leave huge missed opportunity for the state, uh, in my opinion. Looking at my community in Grand Forks, I think we still have an opportunity to make sure we're investing in some of the important research work that the University of North Dakota is doing. Uh, they've got some opportunities to invest in uh, the Space Force and some partnerships there they'd like to do, some buildings on campus. So hopefully we can do that as well. A new infrastructure uh, uh, funding for an underpass in North Grand Forks that I'd like to see. So on those local issues, we still have some time to do that. But on the missed opportunity front, it comes down to uh, we could always take better care of our working families and making sure moms and dads uh, have the resources they need to help raise their kids, send them to good schools, and put a good dinner on the table every night uh, after work. 
I hope we get a chance soon as well to talk about infrastructure and, of course, the census and how all that's going to shake out. But uh, we're out of time. you got to get back to work, which is where you want it to be. So, Representative, <laughs> Representative Vista, always good to talk to you. Thank you, Thanks, sir. Thanks, Joel. See you next time. You bet. When we come back, Patrick Hart's going to join us. Patrick wants to be a Dem NPL chair. We'll, we'll talk to him about it when we continue down the road. Beck News brings you real people and real news. Every weekday on KNDB, KNDM, and KRDK. Start your evening with the Dr. Duke Show at 4. Take a fresh look at current events with ladies of another view at 4.30. Go down the road with Joel at 5.30. Watch No Apologies with Becker at 9. Cap off your night with No Filter with Debbie at 10. Beck News. Real people, real news. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream sheets. When you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Introducing the Cool Turtle, the ultra-comfortable mask enhancer that creates a protective, cool, and breathable space between your mask and your face. Simply slide under any mask or gaiter and immediately feel the refreshing pocket of air surrounding your face. Cool Turtle's ergonomically designed soft, comfortable shell immediately reduces mask friction, allowing you to breathe and talk in a comfortable environment. I can actually breathe. With the Cool Turtle, no more sweating. It's like I don't even have a mask on. Call now and get not one, not two, but three cool turtles for just $10. Order now and we'll send you two more cool turtles free. No fees, absolutely free. Plus, you can get a 10-pack of four-ply face masks. Just pay a separate fee. This offer is not available on Amazon. Get the real cool turtle now. Call 1-800-270-1219. That's 1-800-270-1219. Or visit at coolturtle.com. Order now. Indoor football is back in Bismarck. Bucks football season is right around the corner. Grab a friend or family member for a night of action-packed, hard-hitting entertainment. The Bucks open at the Bismarck Event Center May 8th as they take on the Massachusetts Pirates. Catch the sweetest seats in the house right on the sidelines with VIP service at a Bucks turf table. Available now for single-game purchases. Secure your tickets today by calling 701-595-0771. Bucks football, half the field and double the fun. I'm Rick Becker from No Apologies. Welcome to your After Hours Oasis of Sanity. How can, how can these people not see that they're just clowns? We help simplify and educate you on things going on in the legislature and around the country. Asking the hard hitting questions. But also having Flea Stack and Sid and Marty Croft stuff and we've talked about that sometimes. <laughs> it's bad. Watch us weeknights at 9 central on Beck News and online at Beck.News. Who's Patrick Hart? Well, we're about to tell you. Patrick is uh, a candidate for the Dem NPL uh, chairman. Uh, that uh, position has been left vacant, uh, vacant by Kylie Overson. And so we wanted a chance to, to visit with him. Uh, Mr. Hart, good to have you right here going down the road with us. Well, thanks for the time, Joel. I really appreciate what you do. And um, it's awesome now that you got expanded onto the Beck Network as well. Want to talk, thank you for that. I want to talk to you a little bit about, first off, your business. Uh, anytime works. Uh, you know, you're an entrepreneur. Uh, you're somebody that employs. Tell people what this business is. Uh, well, Anytime Works is a business that started as, um, quite honestly, a side hustle back in 2013, where me and my brother-in-law started uh, painting houses, finishing floors, just to kind of help the housing market in Bismarck. Um, at that point, I was working with the state as an auditor, and we grew this business up to a point where about three years ago, I jumped full time. And now we're framing houses, we're building Bismarck. We had a big contract we actually called off work today. Um, downtown Bismarck building a three-story apartment building. If you've seen it next to Radisson and McDonald's, it's going up, it's huge. And I'm just um, pleasured to be a part of, like I said, 
building the infrastructure of Bismarck Mandan. Well, and one of the reasons I asked you was because of the fact that, uh, you know, you've got that business experience. You've got that entrepreneurial spirit. I want to talk to you, if I can, about employees. And, and I realize this isn't why I asked you to come on, but I just find it very interesting. Can you find the employees that you need? You know, not really. Um, we've had ads out there for the past couple of weeks on Facebook and Bizman Online, and we're just not getting any responses at all. Um, you know, we have the work. We're booked up um, through 2021. We're booking spring 2022. If I could add four or five more guys, I would in a second. But, um, you know, unfortunately uh, and fortunately, everyone in Bismarck's hiring right now. The economy's um, going on all cylinders, and I'm I'm glad to be a part of this, but at the same time, there's, uh, you know, growing pains as well. Well, and, and Patrick holds a master's uh, in project management and business administration uh, from the University of Mary. You want to get a chance to talk about putting that to work, uh, putting that to work in the, in the position of leadership in the state of North Dakota as chairman of the DEM NPL. The obvious question is, why do you want the job? You know, I've um, given that a lot of thought over the past several years where I've um, been able to kind of grow my uh, skill set, my understanding of the state party under Chairwoman Kylie Overson um, as I currently serve as vice chair. You know, one reason that I want to seek this position, why I think I'll be so good in it, is simply because I have a lot of energy and a lot of good ideas to give. Um, a lot of times these district and state level positions, to be honest with you, um, you're kind of the whipping boy with People like you, they um, don't really let you know, but if something's wrong, you're the first they call. Um, I guess I'm willing to take that responsibility on my shoulders. I also think that although we've had some challenges at the ballot box with you know my own candidacy last fall included, the state party has really got a great infrastructure of uh, staff that's been there for several years. You know, there's a little bit of money in the bank. There's some really good... Uh, kind of institutional knowledge that's been grown and turned over. And I really hope to continue that so that now that we have a foundation, um, we can start building the walls and the roof and make this uh, a party that everyone's uh, willing to come back to. Well, you acknowledged it, though. Uh, the Dem NPL is in big trouble in the state of North Dakota. The Dem NPL holds no statewide officers. Uh, the numbers are as low as I remember them in the state legislature. What are we doing wrong? As members of the Dem NPL, what, what is going wrong that we're not connecting at the ballot box? Well, you know, instead of maybe focusing on what's going wrong, I'll focus that there's something that's been new that's happening in uh, politics nationally and locally, and that's the polarization of the parties. One huge opportunity I think the Dem NPL has to do on a statewide level to really brand ourselves and set us apart from the Chuck and Nancy Democrats of the national stage. When uh, I look at the 22 elected officials we have serving in the House and Senate, they've gotten a tremendous amount of bills passed. They've gotten a tremendous, um, I guess, reputation for working across the aisle because quite frankly, Joel, they have to to get anything done. And that's really the narrative that I wanna let North Dakotans know is that we're here, we're here to work for family values, we're here to support agriculture and industry, and um, you know, we're not that coastal elite that you see all too often portrayed very negatively on the national news cycle. Do you think it helps to have the, the curtain pulled back a little bit, if you will, on the Trump presidency, to see that he encourages all these individuals to come to D.C., that local media, we had local media in Fargo here, uh, that, that basically did everything they could to get people to D.C. to that rally. And then you see the rally through the encouragement from the president to basically get to the Capitol, storm the Capitol, create an insurrection, and try to overthrow the government. I have no doubt that Mike Pence would be dead if they would have got to him. I have no doubt that Nancy Pelosi would be dead if they had gotten to him. Do you think the people of North Dakota... You know, and, and I think that some of the strength that the Republican Party has uh, has had in North Dakota is based upon the popularity that Donald Trump has in North Dakota. And so my, my question of you is this. Now that people have seen what type of person he is, now that people have seen what he will use his power to do, do you think that gives an opportunity to the Dem NPL? You know, I think it does. And... 
really what my vision is for the party is, like I said, to brand us away from that national narrative. But just, you know, the, the people that I go to meetings with, the people that have been in the party with me for the last many years aren't, um, again, crazy radicals. They're local farmers. They're, uh, you know, small business owners. They're people that are next door neighbors to all of us. And, you know, we see all this national, um, I'll just call it the, you know, the crazy narrative. It's playing out. And I'll tell you what I will say about it, Joel. I saw a lot of people at that rally and, um, you know, on news. And I don't think everyone was guilty of this insurrection. I think a lot of times there are people that are exercising their right. And there's also people that are there for alternative reasons. Now, I know you've probably seen all the same uh, at the video clips I have. You've seen, you know, the militarized, you know, 10 or 15 people that are walking you know, hand on shoulder up the, the Capitol at Washington. And, you know, that's not right. I can't imagine any North Dakota to say that, you know, you should storm the Capitol with guns. Um, at the same time, though, I, I do think that that narrative of, you know, wanting to, to really be, you know, independent of that federal oversight is um, something that is rang true in North Dakota politics for many years. When we look back to the NPL of the, you know, 40s and 50s, they really wanted local control. And, um, you know, for the longest time, I would say that the Republicans did stand for that. I guess now, as I'm sure you're watching, um, Senate in uh, session happen in Bismarck, there's a lot of power being taken away from local control by the Republican supermajority. So I think there's a lot of different factors at play. And I think it's really a, a great time um, for North Dakota with no um, high ticket representation to really emerge as a grassroots organization that, again, focuses on families, on farmers, on the economy. Really, we want to make North Dakota a place where everyone can um, thrive and survive. I want to, want to just ask you this in the minute that we have left or so. I want to ask you about candidates. I think that the Dem NPL has put good candidates up. Uh, I've seen a lot of good legislators lose. Uh, and, I, and the reason I brought up Donald Trump is because the local legislators ran on that platform. In my home district, uh, we've, got, we've got Sebastian Ertelt and Kathy Scraw and Jason Heitkamper. These individuals ran under Donald Trump. I am Donald Trump. We end up losing Jim Dudsonrod in that process. And so yeah. how do we fix that? I mean, you, you couldn't get more crazy than what Jason Heitkamp is. I mean, the guy is bad. I mean, how do we fix that? You know, I really think we just have to hold the Republicans accountable for what's going on at the Capitol. Just last week, we had our own, um, you know, Senator Rick Becker here in Bismarck literally casting spells from Harry Potter on the, the floor. And really, I think just bringing these, um, you know, this reality to light is what I think should be enough for someone to say, you know, does this guy really represent me and my family and my neighbors? And I think once we can tie that narrative back on the North Dakota happenings and get rid of that national narrative, we're going to start flipping seats left and right. I hope you're right. I really do. And I wish you good luck in this race. I appreciate the fact you're willing to put your name out there and work on behalf of the people of North Dakota. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate you, Joel. Thanks for all you do. When we come back, we're going to get a chance to talk about corporate leaders, uh, what they feel their role is when it comes to, uh, you know, dealing with some of the cancel culture. Those are words that are being used when it comes to dealing with some of the voter fairness issues. We're going to talk about it when we come back here down the road. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. I started by using the world's best cotton called Giza. It's only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Nile River. It's ultra soft and breathable, but extremely durable. My Giza sheets also include full 21 inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets. 
Giza Dream Sheets are available in a variety of colors. Use your promo code and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Not attorney spokesperson. This is a paid advertisement for legal services sponsored by Nightline Legal. Cases assigned on a random basis to participating law firms. This drug remains approved by the FDA. If you or a loved one regularly took Zantac and were later diagnosed with cancer, call right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. Potential cancers include bladder cancer, colon cancer, kidney cancer, stomach cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. Do not stop taking a prescribed medication without first consulting with your doctor. Discontinuing a prescribed medication without your doctor's advice can result in injury or death. Call 1-800-230-9210. Seniors, are you aware that you could pay less for your car insurance? Seniors can save money on their car insurance. You might save a little, you might save a lot. Maybe hundreds of dollars a year. You might save 5% a year, maybe 10%, 15%, or even more. That's a lot of money. So call right now and find out just how much money you might be able to save. 1-800-699-0761. one 800 699 Hi, it's me, Anthony Sullivan, and yes, you've actually caught me at home relaxing because life's been pretty worry-free since I got coverage with American Residential Warranty. You won't believe what ARW covers. Heating and air conditioning, washers and dryers, kitchen appliances, plumbing, water heaters, electrical systems, flat screens and laptops, even pools and spas, and so much more. Call American Residential Warranty. They'll get you covered. 1-800-219-1467. Watch No Filter with me, Debbie Schlussel, for no-nonsense, unfiltered analysis of the news that matters to you. You'll see engaging guests. It began a 444-day nightmare. Entertaining analysis. And it has everything to do with something that happened in history. And honest movie reviews. Trust me, this is just atrocious. No Filter with Debbie, weeknights at 10 p.m. Central on Beck News and online at Beck.News. Get a chance to talk to you a little bit about corporate America and what they're doing. Uh, corporate America recently, over 100 leaders uh, got together to discuss, uh, ba basically discuss state voting laws. Uh, and what they did was they met, virtu met virtually, of course, uh, on Saturday. And what they wanted to respond to and, and at least get a chance to visit about is what's going on with the voting rights. You saw what happened in Georgia. I mean, you saw what happened in Georgia. Major League Baseball was scheduled to go there with its All-Star game. And I think lost in a lot of the debate about Georgia is the fact that the players would have had to go to have an All-Star game. Aside from all the corporate and, and Major League Baseball and what the response was to the, the voting rights bill that worked its way through Georgia, uh, aside from all of that, Major League Baseball players would have wanted and had to go to play in the All-Star game, and you can't make them. It's not required by their contract. In fact, many of them get a bonus if they go, and they maybe would have said, I don't want the bonus. That's not an issue for me. And so, you know, here we sit with Major League Baseball pulling the pin. It doesn't go to Atlanta. It goes to Denver. A bunch of lies get spread about Denver and the voting laws there, which keep this in mind. In Denver, every registered voter gets a ballot mailed to them. It gets mailed to them. Okay, so let's keep that in perspective. It's nothing like uh, what it is in Georgia. Now, that being said, if you compare uh, Georgia to New York, I think you're going to find that New York, in many ways, is more restrictive. Uh, but uh, these corporations, right, once that wheel is turned, and, and don't forget this, the whole legislation that was passed in Georgia was predicated on a lie. It was. And had it not started on a lie, then it probably would have been seen or perceived better by the nation or better by corporate America. But it started with a lie. And it started with the lie of what President Trump said over the weekend again, that the election was stolen, that the election wasn't fair. And the other part I think you need to step back and take a look at is the Electoral College math. He made Georgia this, this place to put your flag down and have a fight over. Without Georgia, if, if Georgia doesn't 
if Georgia goes Donald Trump's way, he's still not president of the United States. He got beat pretty good in the Electoral College. He got beat the same way he beat Hillary Clinton in the Electoral College and ran around saying they had won a landslide. Remember that? It's about the same day that he talked about, well, wait, it was a couple days later that he talked about how he had a bigger crowd at his inaugural than Barack Obama. But heck, uh, let's forget about those pictures, which actually told the truth. But keep in mind that corporate America has dealt themselves a hand, and that's because of purchase power. It's because of purchase power. That's right. I have had many people in my career in radio go about using their businesses and other people's businesses to encourage them not to advertise with us because they wanted Height Camp off the air. That's right. That happened. That in particular happened. Uh, there's an advertising firm that Pat Finken, quite frankly, uh, owned. I think he's out of the business since then. That he ran around telling people uh, that, you know what, don't advertise with Height Camp because we don't want a progressive view on air. That happens. I had a United States senator call. That's right, Kevin Kramer call and say, you got to get this guy off air. So don't act as though that doesn't cut both ways. But what I will tell you is this. It's up to the business. The business is a private business. You can't sit there on any given day as a Republican Party and say, oh, you know what, my pillow, we want you active in politics. We want you there in politics. Or you can't sit there and talk to a guy that owns a casino in Vegas and say, we want you active in politics. We want you to make decisions. Write that big check. And then on another given day, when some of these businesses, which, by the way, are private businesses, say no. No, we don't want to see you limit the ability for people to vote. We don't want you to pass these, these bills that sit there and limit the ability for individuals to vote. And if you do, we don't want to do business there. We're not going to put our snake in the ground and say, you know what, this is home for us. We're not. We're pulling out. We're pulling out. Now, you can call it the cancel culture. You can call it whatever you want. What I'll call it is it's been going on for years. It has. It's just that one party seems to be doing it better now than the other party. And why? And why? Well, the reason why is because they got good reason to do it. When you're taking away somebody's ability to vote and you're making it harder, then you're going to get the attention of corporate America. And there's going to be more of this. Now, also, I want you to keep in mind the fact that these places don't come back. And many times, you don't hear the ones that were going to come that never came. We're at risk of doing some of that in North Dakota. We are when it comes to these studies that uh, research that our universities do. I mean, Yana Murdahl, because of her personal political beliefs, has gone about micromanaging NDSU. And NDSU stands to lose millions of dollars. Now, if you don't think that that's a way of going after individuals and saying, look, we're going to use the power of the legislature to get after you, then you're wrong. Then you're wrong. Uh, also, I want to touch upon the fact that Derek Chauvin trial is going on, you know, as we speak. Um, We've been talking a lot about it as we've gone down the road here together. But uh, one of the things that I think we have to touch upon is, is some of the new information. Uh, we know now that there's been another shooting uh, in Minneapolis, um, or Brooklyn Center, I should say. We know that there's been another shooting. And we also know that the individual that did the shooting is saying now, of a black man, I might point out, is saying now that, look, um, I, I thought I had my taser. I actually had my gun. You know, believe him or not believe him. Uh, do you give him just the benefit of the doubt? Do you ask yourself, did he have to shoot him? There's also footage in Virginia uh, that we saw where a lieutenant in the U.S. military has his hands sticking out the window, asking what he's done, being told to take his... Uh, seatbelt off, him saying that I'm afraid you think I'm going to uh, have you uh, believe that I'm, I'm going for my gun and you're going to shoot me. I've got weapons drawn on me. And so what do they do? They pepper spray him. 
I mean, go watch that video. And then ask yourself if, put, put yourself in this perspective. I realize most of you that are viewing this show are not a black men, but put yourself in their seat. And then you're going to say, well, what did, if they didn't do anything wrong, it wouldn't happen to them, right? You already said that in your mind. Well, look at the video in Virginia and ask yourself if that man serving this country in uniform, in our military, did anything wrong. He didn't have tabs on his truck. You know why? Because it was new. He had tabs on the side. They saw it. I mean, what did he do wrong? It, it just, it, it baffles me. And if George Floyd did something wrong in the Twin Cities, didn't they have control of him when he was on the ground handcuffed? Instead of kneeling on his neck for nine minutes? I mean, come on. It, it's just, it's ridiculous. Um, the fact that we... As, as members of the white community in the Midwest can't support and encourage uh, the fact that these people have rights and they should be treated fairly, honestly, the same way we would expect to be treated. If we can't do that, then who are we? I'll have some closing comments for you when we come back right here on our trip down the road. Do you worry about going to the dentist? After all, a visit to the dentist can easily cost $2,000 or more. Well, relax. The Carefree Dental Card is now available in your area. Call now and we'll send your actual card at no cost today. With the Carefree Dental Card, you go to the dentist whenever you need and you instantly pay a lot less. Activate your card and you can start using it immediately. From exams and cleanings to more expensive procedures like crowns, dentures, even braces, they're all included with the Carefree Dental Card. Say you go to the dentist today without any card and your bill is, well, ouch. Wait a minute, let's try that again. You go to the dentist today and show your Carefree Dental Card, you save $525. The Carefree Dental Card is just $15.95 a month, so call now and make going to the dentist carefree. Call 1-800-416-5739 to receive your Carefree Dental Card information kit. 1-800-416-5739 Call now. I can't say enough good things about these nano hearing aids. Real people talking about nano hearing aids. The hearing quality is great. Until now, hearing aids used to be too expensive for the average person. Until nano. Call now and you'll get your nano hearing aids for only $297. You'll save $100. When you buy one hearing aid, nano will give you a second hearing aid free. Call right now. 1-800-213-3815. We're the ladies of another view, bringing you a fresh view on local issues. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Oh my gosh. Isn't that, that the most condescending, funny. rude email you've ever um, received? Well, welcome to National the third term. term of a certain president. I really believe that. And different perspectives you won't get on the mainstream media. Watch us weekday afternoons at 4.30 Central Time on Beck News and at Beck.News. Who do you trust with your digital life? Not all cloud backup providers keep your data truly private. Beck Cloud Backup uses advanced multi-layer encryption to keep your family photos, videos, and sensitive business documents secure and only for your eyes. Your Beck Lightband Internet service already includes 50 gigs of free storage to keep your digital life safe and secure. Call us at 701-475-2361 to start using your Beck Cloud Backup today. Attention, have you or a loved one suffered from maculopathy, a serious retinal injury, after taking the prescription drug Elmiron for interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome? In 2018, a researcher at the Emory School of Medicine linked Elmiron, a prescription drug that treats interstitial cystitis or bladder pain syndrome, to maculopathy, which is sight-threatening and can cause an abrupt change of vision. Call Elmiron Justice for a free legal consultation. Please call 800-395-5680. Well, it's been fun going down the road with you. Just some closing comments for you in the little bit of time that we have left on this trip. I uh, want to talk about whether or not the Dem NPL has a responsibility. We heard a little bit earlier a man that wants to be chairman of the Dem, B and the Dem NPL. Now, here's the thing. I think that the Dem NPL is responsible for what I'm about to say. 
because it's their job to win elections and they're not winning elections. And so when you can't beat a legislative candidate and a person like Rick Becker, who can you beat? I mean, I blame that on the damn NPL. I don't blame that on Rick Becker. Heck, if the Republican Party is willing to support a candidate like that, then that's their business. If the Democratic Party can't beat a candidate like that, if you can't beat somebody who's casting spells on the House floor and embarrassing our state by doing that from Harry Potter, then don't whine. It's your job to beat him. I mean, this guy's Pluto. He's absolutely Pluto. And if you can't sit there and point that he's out that far, then it's, it's your fault. It's your fault to beat him. Because I like to think that North Dakotans are reasonable enough to know that if you're sitting there and you're, you're supporting a candidate who flat out lies, who lies about the leftist movement of Juneteenth. Uh, Juneteenth. Now, let me give you an example of what I'm getting at, okay? I listened to Rick Becker talk about how Juneteenth is nothing but a liberal movement. So let me, let me put some states in your mind. Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama. Are those leftist states? Those are all states that supported Juneteenth. Those are all states that supported recognizing the end of slavery. But, but you know what Rick Becker said? That, that this is just a leftist movement. We're the 48th state in North Dakota to support that, to pass it. He didn't vote for it. He didn't vote for it in large part because he said we don't have black people in this state. When you can't beat a candidate like that who doesn't even realize Alabama, Arkansas, Mississippi, states like that aren't leftist states and is willing to lie about that on radio, when you're sitting there and you can't beat a candidate like that who's you know casting spells about Harry Potter, then it's nobody's fault but the damn NPL. I would hope the Republican Party would put up somebody more decent if they're going to win. I would hope that in their primary process, if nothing else, they beat them. But the man's Pluto. The damn NPL should learn to win. It's been good riding with you, folks.